Today was the first day that we had the animals on display and we weren't sure what the reception would be but we had 22 tours with over a little over a thousand people came through and we didn't have one negative comment we had nothing but support and it's it's refreshing after all of the the hoops we've jumped through to try to open a business and pay for this expensive piece of property I think we finally have gotten the niche now if if we can get through this county issue um, and try to resolve that with them I think this would be something exciting for Buford I mean everybody loved it and the cats responded well um, with with my fine it cost me two dollars a day or two dollars per person today to have them come through so it's worth it to me and I think we'll uh, we'll plan on doing it next week if I don't get arrested. In this facility, I've done this for 26 years. This isn't something that I just concocted to to irritate the county or make the county mad at me, despite what they might think. We have a part ownership in a facility in Oklahoma that's got 180 cats at any given time. We've got tigers and wolves and bears. Um, we feed 3,200 pounds of meat a day to those animals. So this isn't something we just did as a hobby. This is a life for us. And I took a break from it when I came to Beaufort because we just, the family just needed a break. You can't leave town when you've got lions and tigers in the house. So um, now what I've decided to do here is to turn this into an animal sanctuary. We rescue animals from zoos that can no longer keep them. Every animal here has some abnormality or was a pet that went bad and there's no place to put them. You can't put them down because they are a protected animal and they, they, need, to be, they need to be housed someplace. Everybody, everybody agrees they need to be someplace, just nobody wants them in their backyard. So all the neighbors from around the area came up and commented. They love to hear the cats will roar at night. When the sun goes down, these guys become real vocal and they just, it's, it's their nature to let you know that they're in the area and it's the coolest thing if you go to the drive-in theater and just before the movies start you can hear you can feel it in your chest next door that's how loud they are but we've got tigers and lions in house here um, I will probably bring some other exotic cats from the other facility here and kind of exchange them out once in a while now that I've got the USDA licensing in place, we are going to basically encapsulate that pond behind the building. And they'll have a big, huge seven acre outdoor enclosure with a pond and a bridge. And it's, um, it's something that I did not want to invest in until I knew that this would work. And the ironic thing is the, the county says that I can't have a cash register ringing a sale in the front while there's animals on display because that makes me a zoo. Where I argue that a sanctuary can sell items in their gift shop to pay for the sanctuary and it's still a sanctuary. They said that an animal cannot be present when a dollar is exchanged hands but they do it across the street at the dog shelter every single day. They exchange money for dog adoptions. Their argument is they just recouping their cost. My argument is I want to recoup some of my costs. So it's, we're just butting heads and I don't know where we'll end up. Um, probably in a federal civil court, um, civil rights court case because what I'm doing is legal. To possess these animals, there's no state laws, there's no local laws and I'm licensed by the United States federal government to display these animals. So I think they're, they're overstepping their boundaries a little bit here.